Hello friends, I am Jagannath. I am going to deal anthropology for uh, civil services. Uh, before getting into the subject, uh, before preparing uh, for anthropology, we need to know what anthropology is, uh, the nature of the subject, uh, the different kinds of chapters you have in the syllabus, how to deal with them and the scope etc you need to be very clear so when you are very clear with the meaning and the content of the subject it becomes very easy for you for the for preparation of the subject so step by step i will be discussing what anthropology is in this session and what is the approach need to be followed for understanding the subject and to reach the level of pains to crack uh, civil services as far as uh, anthropology is considered right now. Uh, we have got a session here uh, regarding anthropology which consists of classroom sessions and practice sessions. So just by attending the classes you will not be able to go deep into the subject. Uh, so to reach the level of mains and interview, there is a practice session apart from uh, classroom sessions. So this is the program. Before this program, uh, this is an introductory session to understand what anthropology is and how we deal with uh, anthropology. So before uh, uh, getting into the subject, uh, there are certain essential prerequisites in general for a student who has opted for civil services to crack uh, the examination. So what are these prerequisites essential? So I will just uh, uh, consolidate within 5 to 10 minutes the prerequisites essential and uh, we shall get into the subject later. So the first prerequisite essential is uh, the discipline. So um, the schedule uh, which is essential for the purpose of preparation. You need to plan within a timetable, the syllabus, and whatever you have planned to complete within the specific time schedule, you need to be on the track. Uh, the gap between the plan and what you are, uh, what you have completed must be minimum possible. Then you will be able to reach the goal, which is, uh, which is within the time frame uh, <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, you have to utilize all your uh, physical strength in terms of the uh, strength which is essential uh, to sit, uh, read for many number of hours. You need to be physically strong here and uh, uh, you need to use your all uh, intellectual you need to focus your capabilities, physical and intellectual, on a single point so that uh, uh, you will be able to crack civil services very easily. When there is a diversification of your capabilities into different issues, uh, for example, if you are a software engineer, sparing some amount of time, what happens is when you are dividing your capabilities, there are, you are competing with people who have completely dedicated uh, to civil services and who are more intelligent you are, remember that you are competing with these people so my suggestion is to uh, is to spare all your capabilities on a single point uh, to crack this easily and you need to work on this uh, program on a daily basis consistency is more important uh, on and off you can uh, watch a movie or go for your hobby not an issue but uh, Consistency in preparation is essential. That is another prerequisite essential. And the level of consciousness is more important. Will not, our conscious level <clears throat> will not be the same always. For example, you are attending um, a class or for example, you are reading or you are going through a book, etc. So what happens is uh, when your conscious level decreases, uh, the process of uh, recording the essential data into your permanent memory decreases. So the ammo, the level of consciousness in the classroom or, or a reading must be very high. So 
it is a general tendency for a human being uh, after focusing for about uh, 5 to 6 or 10 minutes uh, your consciousness in general decreases and and the content to understand and to memorize or to record decreases so what is the solution available to you in this case as far as this solution is considered what you what you have to do is uh, while the class is going on you need to jot down some important points trying to make a synopsis of the topic going on in the class so that when you are deliberately using a pen to keep it on the paper what happens is you need to be conscious you can, at subconscious state you cannot write something else but when you are listening there is every possibility where you 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 may get into a subconscious uh, condition where the receiving a, a level of the concept uh, decreases uh, so try to make synopsis in the classroom itself of every topic going on it helps you to frame the synopsis essential uh, and it helps you to have a very clear-cut idea about the concept at the same time it makes you conscious uh, in the class always and the other prerequisite essential is you need to be strong physically and mentally. So to be strong physically, maintaining your physique, uh, to do some physical activity, uh, brisk walking or jogging or some yoga, any kind of physical activity keeps you fit regular, on a regular basis. Around uh, 150 to 200 minutes per week, try to make some physical activity and mental fitness psychologically you must be very strong because life itself as you know you, when you go on you encounter <clears throat> different kinds of problems you need to solve problem by problem life is such so be prepared that you are going to face certain problems in in every respect in terms of your personal life or family life or or preparing for civil services or health or whatnot uh, uh, <clears throat> be mentally strong, uh, be proactive, uh, try to predict something else, what is what might happen to you depending upon the circumstances and uh, be prepared that uh, uh, life itself is a uh, hurdle facing, you know, the more hurdles, the stronger hurdles you face, uh, you become the more tough. When you are moving away from the hurdles, in your life which uh, you need to face uh, you don't become strong so be prepared that you are going to face problems and uh, the role of intelligence and industry is a very important uh, factor which we need to know so <clears throat> as far as this uh, uh, people think that to crack civil services one must be uh, too intelligent but I don't accept with this People who are of average IQ levels can crack civil services provided the when you follow the previous prerequisites which I have specified. Um, intelligence plays a factor but not a major factor. Industry is hard work is essential and it is inevitable you have to do that. Um, these are the main essential prerequisites. The, and the other aspect which I have highlighted is love, <clears throat> which um, I'm love in the sense uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, the point uh, which I am rising is uh, the kind of uh, uh, attraction you have towards the opposite sex at this age may distract you from the target. So the main reason behind it is uh, at this age the hormones in your body are at at the peaks where they deviate you from the target and uh, your goal so for the time being you must be psychologically prepared that under any circumstances don't get deviated with this aspect uh, and uh, when you are focusing on this uh, what happens is uh, the number of deviations you need to minimize things so that uh, uh, reaching target becomes very easy and if at all some of you if you are already in love with somebody else yeah uh, be prepared that uh, you need to tackle any kind of uh, 
unexpected uh, uh, problems which you may face where for example uh, she or he may not be according to your assumption or thought uh, you may get into soup sometimes so be prepared for uh, all these aspects if you are not into this issue in love better avoid that so these are uh, the essential prerequisites essential and this is uh, uh, delivered to you on the basis of my own uh, personal experience to you and now let us get into the subject uh, anthropology so uh, what is anthropology anthropology is the study of humanity itself so it is a holistic uh, perspective it studies about man in in every respect possible it studies about man what he is physically as an animal how he has been evolved uh, as far as physical aspect is considered and it deals man even in the case of socio cultural context so what is socio cultural con context you will be able to understand by the end of this session i will elaborate it very clearly to you uh, <clears throat> this anthropology is derived from the greek words anthropos means human beings and logos means study the study of human beings is known as anthropology so uh, anthropology has got mainly certain branches socio cultural anthropology physical anthropology archaeological anthropology and linguistic anthropology uh, i will explain all these four different main branches of anthropology in this session to understand the nature of the subject and scope of the subject so socio in terms of society so it studies society society is made up of people who are in a relation with one another with formal and informal relations we will discuss in detail what they are here the physical anthropology is also known as a biological anthropology so <clears throat> because anthropology deals with uh, man or human humanity because human beings live in society one of the main branch of anthropology is social anthropology or socio cultural anthropology where it deals with society so what is society you need to be clear with society is a group of people we are living in society in this society we have certain relationships in this we have got uh, different institutions we occupy these institutions for example family is an institution political organization is an institution family contains individuals the political organization contains individuals family and political organization are interrelated so the society itself is made up of different institutions and these inter institutions are interrelated that is what actually society is so how these institutions are existing in different societies uh will be the main content of uh, anthropology so society is a group of people who are dependent upon each other for survival and well being and who share a common culture a human society is made up of people a culture is made up of behavior of people the rules which govern behavior and uh, artifacts are tool this is the main content of uh, social anthropology so in a society based upon the culture of that particular society the relationships are being determined so what is society what is culture we need to be more clear uh, while we are dealing with anthropology which i will discuss right now with you so this is what society is according to social anthropology defines society as a human aggregation so we are living in a society which is a group of people 
sharing a common habitat. So we are living in a, a, a city or a country, uh, a region which is a habitat in which we are living. So a society shares a common habitat, for example, Indian society. The common habitat for Indian society is uh, the territorial boundaries of India is the habitat. So characterized by, uh, by a relative self-sufficiency and maintaining continuity of existence across generations. So while we are living in this society, we require certain resources for survival. So the society with uh, certain activities, especially with certain uh, economic activities and security aspects based upon certain norms of that particular society, the society supplies essential resources for your sustenance. I will elaborate it much after in this session. So self-sufficiency. So the society is providing essential resources to you, the food, security, etc. provided by society and maintaining the society, persisting it and across generation, generation by generation. That is what society is. For example, family is part of society, is an institution where the children born in the family are being taken care by these parents, protecting them, providing essential resources to them, providing security, education, making them to learn the culture, making them to learn the norms of the society to survive in it. Uh, that is what uh, uh, society is. The word society emphasizes the importance of links and networks that join individuals and groups to other individuals within a human aggregation. So the society defines the kind of relationships existing between the people. For example, in a family, you, for example, you are related with your parents. You, uh, in a society, you are related with your teachers. You are related with your administrators to an extent. The chief minister of a state is one way an administrator to you. So how the dynamics of relationships existing in a society is being defined by this social anthropology, which is based upon the ethics of the particular society. These relationships are basically of two types. One is based upon the kinship and the second is based upon the formal relationships. Kinship relations have been acquired through the process of, uh, what can I say, uh, through the process of uh, blood lineage or through marriage. So kinship relations means the, the kind of relationship which you acquire, the blood relationship, the relationship with your parents, grandparents, you, your grandchildren is a, a, a blood lineage, which is known as consanguineous relations in anthropology. And uh, the other relationships in kinships are uh, acquired through a final relations, which is through marriage, which are not blood relatives. Your wife or husband is not a blood relative, but a primary relative acquired through marriage. So these are the main two, based upon these, uh, a web of relationships exist within your kin, which varies from society to society. So that particular kinship based relationships and the relationships in the society are not being confined within the kinship. You are relating yourself out of your kinship group with the different institutions like the educational institutions or economic organizations or political organizations, etc. So this forms a network of web uh, that leading to the formation of a society. And uh, the way the relations are being formed, the norms followed in the society majorly forms the socio-cultural anthropology. So, society is a group of people who are dependent on each other for survival and well-being and who share a common culture. So, in this territory in which we are living, we will have a common culture. So, human society is made up of people. A culture is 
made up of the behavior of the people. So the way we behave is being determined by the culture. For example, in India, the behavior is based upon the culture of India. In America, the, the way the people behave is based upon the culture of uh, America. So the behavior is being determined by the norms of the society, which has been determined by the culture of the society. Uh, this constitutes uh, society and this is what culture is. Culture is made up of behavior of the people, the rules which govern the behavior and the artifacts or tools. So this culture can be, this culture is material culture and non-material culture. So material culture consists of all the kind of uh, material artifacts. Like It can be anything. It can be your clothes, your food, um, any tools, uh, etc. constitutes uh, uh, material culture. Non-material culture is norms, ideas, etc. constitutes the non-material culture. So the material and non-material culture together constitutes the cultural aspects of uh, a society which determines the behavior of the people. So this is how culture is being explained. The total way of life of human group, it encompasses the mental, relational and material of technological process and products of human groups. So, uh, encompasses the mental, the way you think, the ideas, the kind of relationships you have got in the society, the kind of tools, for example, uh, the kind of tools being used by an agricultural society is something different from the kind of tools being used by an urban society. Uh, the kind of symbols being used, the kind of beliefs we have got. So the kind of beliefs we have got in Africa, in America, in India, the kind of beliefs you have got in the Stone Age, the kind of beliefs you have got right now. Not only in, in relation with time, in the contemporary societies, the kind of beliefs in Africa and India might not be the same. And the rules of behavior in different societies varies from societies to society. So this constitutes a culture of a society. So this society is an aggregation or a combination of institution, as I have said. In this process, anthropology deals with the different institutions before getting into the different kinds of institutions with which anthropology deals we need to know what an institution is an institution is a group of people who have come together for a common goal for example you have got admitted uh, in a uh, in an educational institution so what happens is uh, all the students in this educational institution have the same common goal yes or no so that is what, take any kind of institution, whether economic or political or whatnot. Uh, and these many institutions together form the society, which are interlinked, which interact with one another. So culture is defined as a total way of life sometimes, and it is fact. It consists of material culture or non-material culture. Material culture consists of artifacts, clothing, food, etc. And non-material culture includes the ideas of celebrating a festival or beliefs, values, rules in different societies. For example, values or beliefs, norms, etc. Um, take for example, Sati Sahagamanam. So, in uh, pre-independent India, um, in the medieval uh, uh, period, uh, Sati Sahagamanam, the widow uh, jumping into the fire of uh, the husband, uh, is a norm. But right now, in the contemporary society, this activity who encourages this uh, uh, will be subjected to law and it is a criminal activity. So. These beliefs, values, norms, etc. are dynamic. They are not static. They keep on changing. So this cultural anthropology or sociocultural anthropology studies culture. 
on the basis of the norms and values of the society not only in the contemporary society in relative to the time of the same society and different societies that is the reason why and one of the main approach of anthropology is a comparative approach and also it is temporal comparative in terms of the time duration so because of this reason anthropology is the study of human species at all levels of development in all places and at all times so what do you mean by this if you are able to understand this couple of lines you will be able to understand what anthropology is so a human being at all levels of development so for example uh development here both physically and culturally so what is physical development of human being so we are the resultant of physical and cultural evolution physically we have been formed we have been evolved from a monkey type of organism evolution is the process of conversion of a a simple organisms to complex organisms or a period of time through the process of adaptation so our uh, ancestor a monkey kind of organism with the gradual changes happening we have been evolved into homo sapiens this is what uh, uh, while studying this our predecessor uh, these monkeys known as uh, as prosimians simians and uh, human beings uh, at all these levels from primitive to the present complex situation is known as all levels of uh, development physical then what is a cultural uh, level of development for example culturally we have been evolved from stone age from stone age we have evolved to a civilization condition in between we have different uh, uh, evolutionary cultural stages like uh, the bronze age or the iron age or the agriculture etc uh, etc et uh, we have finally uh, acquired to the stage of civilization so that is a cultural evolution so studying physically from primitive animal to the complex homo sapiens studying our culture from the stone age to the existing civilization are different stages of uh, our development at all places and at all times at all places means it is not just confined to india it studies how this evolution happened in america africa india or elsewhere at all the times past and present so with this approach we study different branches of anthropology so what are the different main branches of anthropology um we study as far as anthropology is considered so the first is socio cultural anthropology so before uh, explaining this uh, uh, i will uh, explain you in detail why this is known as socio cultural anthropology for the sake of uh, civil services uh let us consider whether social anthropology or the cultural anthropology is one and the same for us but if you are a specialist in anthropology um society uh, you have a little bit uh, a minor difference between social anthropology and uh, cultural anthropology society means a group of people where they have certain uh, relationships which is formed by where the society itself is been formed by institutions society has got a certain structure for example society is made up of families families together form institutions and it has got certain hierarchical or certain uh, structure which is visible 
when you are studying about the, these groups and the structure etc constitutes a social anthropology more cultural anthropology is the cultural pattern in each society uh, as i have defined what culture is uh, varies from society to society when you are focusing on cultural aspects festivals kind of things language etc constitutes a cultural anthropology so for the purpose of civil services we can call it as socio cultural anthropology we need not well define and differentiate what is social anthropology and cultural anthropology for our purpose we can call it as socio cultural anthropology because it is intertwined and we cannot separate society from culture and culture from society when you are trying to explain what culture is you automatically get into society when you are trying to explain society its structure etc automatically you get into culture so separating it is difficult and it is not essential for us so socio socio cultural anthropology depicts socio cultural evolution of society in terms of structure and organization so here as i have already given you what society and culture is and what evolution is what physical evolution and cultural evolution is the structure of each and every society is not the same varies from society to society in a society which is more agrarian the structure of the family might be a joint family in a society which is more industrial or urban society the structure of the family might be very small like a nuclear family in a society uh, the structure of the family might be something different where you may be having more number of spouses the family might be much more larger and uh, the organizations in the society also vary from society to society for example we have a kind of uh, political organization which is a democratic which is a parliamentary form of democracy which we have got for example another political organization might be in a presidential form of organization which is also a democratic form of government a society might be governed by a monarchy so the kind of political economic organizations vary from society to society will be the main part of studying the structure and organization of socio cultural anthropology the statistics number comparing data and the dynamics of culture and society as i have already said uh, by giving the example of sati sahagamanam the culture being followed is not static which changes with time and uh, the culture diffuses from one society to another society that is the reason why we call culture and society are dynamic because they keep on changing because of different innovations and diffusion of uh, cultural elements from one society to another society so that is the areas where socio cultural anthropology deals with so this is how it deals socio cultural anthropology studies society in terms of institutions and groups it studies marriage family kinship these are all these institutions economic organizations political organizations religious value and so on the next main branch of anthropology is physical anthropology so physic which is the physical body with which you are made up of so how this body is been formed is it been created as it is or is it the resultant of evolution what does it contain so this constitutes uh, physical anthropology so it studies humans as an organism in time and space so what do you mean by this organism in time and space time as i have said since uh, the different time durations existing uh we have passed through different stages from uh, 
uh, a monkey type of organism we have been transformed into Asclepithecus, Homo habilis, so, so Cro-Magnon, uh, and finally we have a, we have transformed into Homo sapiens. Uh, sapiens. So this has happened in different time durations, and this has happened at different places. In this process of formation, it has been established that uh, we have originated in Africa and migrated from Africa to the different continents. In this process of migration, a different migration to different places from Africa, we have, with time, we have been transformed into different uh, uh, human beings, uh, finally into Homo sapiens sapiens. Even though we are Homo sapiens sapiens, there is a lot of physical diversity existing, uh, which is being established in terms of race into negroid or caucasoid or australoid or the different kinds of mongoloid or the different kinds of uh, races into which uh, human being is being evolved these are the different aspects where physical anthropology deals with time refers to the different stages of human evolution space refers to the way va variation among the human beings living in different parts of the globe so we need to go much more deep while i am explaining a uh, uh, physical anthropology to you uh, next branch is archaeological anthropology. It's the study of past humans and culture through material remains. So, archaeology is the study of uh, the past societies. History also studies about the past societies. The fundamental difference between archaeology and history is history studies about societies where there is literary proofs. Where archaeology studies about societies, where there is no literary proofs. It studies societies on the basis of the material remains left over, in the, which has been acquired through the process of excavation. In between, uh, between archaeology and history, there is proto-history, where the societies are literate, uh, but uh, when we have not deciphered it, it is known as a uh, Proto-history, for example, Indus Valley civilization to an extent can be considered as proto-history. So, archaeology is the study of society based on the available artifacts. It can be bones or it can be stone tools or it can be some utensils like uh, the wheel or pottery or etc. Whatever it is. Uh, and we reconstruct the past. Uh, in, uh, that is what archaeology deals with. It can be a biological remnant or a cultural remnant. The next branch of anthropology is linguistic anthropology. And we have got only one chapter in our syllabus. It doesn't have got much weightage when we relatively compare with the other branches of anthropology, which where the linguistic anthropology studies about language, its role in different societies. Um, the linguistic construction etc constitutes uh, linguistic anthropology and we have got uh, just uh, one chapter regarding this next is uh, social anthropology define society as a human aggregation as we have discussed uh, already next is cultural anthropology as I have already discussed this with you but to make you much more cl clear what cultural anthropology is defines culture as the sum total of what an individual acquires from his or her society so whatever you have got is from the society so the technology the tools the domestic life the family life you have got or the kind of tools, whether it might be the stone tools or uh, automobile, or whatever it is, it is being manufactured by the ideas being given by the culture in terms of technology. Kinship, as I have explained to you, varies from society to society. Economy, the kind of uh, production, consumption and distribution is economy, is not the same in all the societies. In the primitive societies, you don't have a common medium of exchange 
like currency barter system prevails in certain societies in in, in the modern civilized societies you have got a trade uh, in terms of world trade organization with the international norms and a medium of exchange is present so how this production consumption and distribution happens in different societies constitutes the economy in terms of anthropology it influenced by culture is a major factor when we study economy in anthropology religion the different religions then <clears throat> and beliefs and the political organizations according to society might have got just a band of uh, 50 people dominated by a strong or physical ma- man uh the who is physically strong used to govern the band which consists of uh, uh people from uh, 30 to 50 people that is the polity where the legislative executive and judiciary is the single person who dominates physically but right now we have a political organization where where you are going to choose your leader in the modern democracy which we, where there is a lot of uh, a difference between a band and the existing uh, existing democratic setup where there are different stages uh, in the process of evolution of this political system you have got monarchy uh, different kinds of panchayats etc in the political organizations the law art morals values and other items created by humans constitutes cultural anthropology so with this the society thrives cultural uh, cultural forms as a guide to the society so the culture uh, forms a guide to the society on the basis of the culture the society need to behave society and culture are interdependent one cannot exist without the other that is, that is what a cultural anthropology is so <clears throat> there are certain approaches for anthropological study so what are the different approaches followed by anthropology so why am i specifying the approaches followed by anthropology because when you know what the approach is you will be able to understand the different chapters uh, given in our upsc syllabus because you have a different uh, research methodology you have got a, a chapter you have got human genetics you have got studying the institutions like family marriage kinship etc so to understand why these different chapters are made be in part of our syllabus you will be able to understand when we know the perception of anthropology so one of the main approach of anthropology is a field work so what do you mean by field work field work is you this anthropology acquires the knowledge and develops the subject by itself getting into the society observing different societies knowing them practically and adding this knowledge to anthropology so being in the field yourself as an anthropologist in different societies is field work it has got many different variant methods of approach which we deal in detail when we study this field work methodology or research methodology in uh, anthropology comparative is another uh, approach of anthropology comparative means it always compares one society with another society so that you will be able to find the similarities and uh, differences so you will be able to compare indian society with american society so what is the structure of the family in america what is the structure of family in india what is the structure of the family in india within andaman nicobar islands and uh, tribes like sentinelese etc etc you compare it so which is known as all the institutions you are going to compare you are going to compare the family political organization economic organization etc so in this process you will be able to understand what uh, human society is uh, what are the similarities we have got uh, within different societies and what are the differences you have got in these human societies you will be able to know in this process of uh, cross cultural comparison anthropological perspective is holistic perspective because uh, it doesn't deal in a single dimension it deals a human society as an animal as a human being how he has been evolved 
and what are the aspects he has got uh, uh, culturally and socially in comparison with the different societies and temporally at different stages of evolution in terms of time so you are viewing the society in all these multi dimensional manner that is the reason why anthropology is known as holistic systems and process perspective uh, because you take a system here the system for example take a computer system a computer is made up of uh, uh, different units you have got input device uh, you have got a display device in, in terms of screen or input in the case of a, a keyboard or the processor or the motherboard all of these together form a system in the same way the society itself is also made up of different parts in a system an individual leads to the formation of family different families form institutions different institutions form society so it is a system when you are able to divide uh, the society into different parts and understand things and integrate uh, you will be able to understand very clearly and how the process with the help of culture is how the society runs in different uh, uh, societies will be part of systems and process perspective a mechanistic perspective when you are able to understand society with your understanding and perception when you are able to understand the phenomena of society with the perception of the member of the society is a emic perception etic is your perception so uh, when, so when you are you can understand a concept very clearly when you are able to understand the process happening in the society the way the person understands in the society who is part of the society and the way with your knowledge you understand something else with their knowledge they understand something else so when both the perceptions uh, uh, when you are able to look into with both the perceptions all possible perceptions you will be able to know what fact is you may be wrong or the person in the society might be wrong for example even in the urban societies people think sometimes even in the rural societies also the people think in different ways for example an individual is suffering with a chicken pox so what do you what is your assumption uh, being an educated person you you think that uh, it is because of a viral infection but people who are not much educated in the interior rural or tribal region because of their cultural background the disease is been attributed to the curse of a goddess it is his or the person's uh, dimension so this disease caused by the curse of a goddess is uh, the perception of the member of the society which is emic approach dealing with their uh, perception your understanding in terms of microbial infection is uh, etic perception so while studying the society the dimensions you need to study over different issues must be both emic and etic and case study method is uh, taking a single society and understanding it in different ways is known as a case study method next is anthropology in comparative and anthropology is comparative and evolutionary so why this is as i have already said what is comparative approach and what is evolutionary because evolution is the process of conversion from simple to complex through the process of adaptation or a period of time stone age to the civilization prosimians to homo sapiens sapiens physical and cultural evolution so anthropology is also temporal related to time so the stone age is the past the contemporary civilization is the uh, existing uh, current society so you you relate the existing society with the a primitive stone age society how this has been evolved is uh, uh, temporal so these are the different approaches where the anthropology follows it generalizes certain concepts and uh, understands the society in this process it comes across certain uh, cultural elements in terms of society and culture some are universal means which are present in all the societies some are general means which are present in the major societies 
some are unique which are present only in some societies so these kind of aspects are considered um, to understand what society is ethic and dynamic approach just now i have I explained to you what is ethic and dynamic approach the two different approaches to understand society so in this process anthropology studies all these institutions family marriage kinship economic organizations political organizations religion etc so in terms of india and the world and these all these organizations are interlinked that is the reason why in our syllabus all these different uh, institutions uh, uh, chapter by chapter are studied in a cross cultural comparison to understand a human society so to understand what physical anthropology in detail physical anthropology deals with man as an animal in the animal kingdom physical anthropology study physical evolution of man and factors responsible for the transformation from animal to human being so as i have already explained that man is the resultant of evolution uh, that how it happened what are the factors responsible for this uh, evolution will be the part of his is uh, is a part of physical anthropology it also studies uh, biological factors responsible for uh, cultural evolution so <clears throat> for example the meaning of this uh, chapter is so you are speaking you are speaking a language language is cultural part this culture which is a, a language is the resultant of the physical structure you have got in your body because of the brain and the larynx so these factors have led to cultural evolution so without language which is the which has got a base in the physics of your body uh, led to a cultural evolution the thumb is responsible thumb is a physical factor of your body but this is responsible for culture making a tool tool is a cultural aspect so what are the biological factors in your body are responsible for cultural evolution will be part of this uh, chapter and it classifies uh, the primitive organisms like uh, uh, prosimians means pro means before pro means before simians means monkeys what are these organisms existing before the existence of monkeys simians means monkeys apes means this gorilla or chimpanzee orangutan constitutes these apes and man so these are been classified and compared this is another chapter of physical anthropology these are different areas uh, which we deal in physical anthropology it also studies genetics is a different area very important area which plays a major role in your success <clears throat> so uh one of the factor i like to tell you is as far as socio cultural anthropology is considered there is abundant guidance and material available across the country but as far as physical anthropology is considered uh, this is not available both in terms of guidance lectures and material assumption here in our guidance you are going to get uh, every aspect in terms of lecture in terms of uh, the material required topic by topic you will be able to get this that is one of the great advantage you have got with us here when we when you follow our uh, program so this uh, genetics uh, studies about uh, it also studies about genetics physical anthropology genetics studies about genes and how the characters have been inherited across generations uh it it also studies about race human growth and development and applied anthropology um, these are the main different areas where uh, physical anthropology deals with so applied anthropology is application of this knowledge which you have acquired for, for your betterment for example ergonomics is a branch of applied anthropology it study of people it is the study of people's efficiency in their working environment so for example 
uh, your uh, physical, uh, for example, you have got a physical uh, labor or a computer engineer or an agricultural labor or a person working in a coal mines or whatever it is. What are the essential tools required for him? What are the essential conditions need to be provided for him to maximize his efficiency? Economical. Ergonomics. So, uh, with, so this is what uh, uh, ergonomics deals with, uh, which is part of applied physical anthropology. But another example of applied physical anthropology is uh, kinanthropometry is defined as the study of human size, shape, uh, proportions, etc. So, <clears throat> we do not have the same uh, physical uh, stature. An individual varies uh, in terms of his physical strength, uh, in terms of his height, weight. Somebody will be having very strong legs. Some of you will be having very strong hands. So, some of you might be very long. Some of you might be very short. For example, Tendulkar is a very good uh, batsman. Lara is a very good batsman. So, certain body ratio is suitable for certain activities. So, this kinanthropometry studies the different body proportions and uh, sets these people for uh, unique physical activities for a better performance a kind of uh, activity in kinanthropometry and uh, ergonomics which is an applied physical anthropology is also a chapter for you. So, finally, <clears throat> after understanding this, uh, what is the advantage you have got with anthropology? Anthropology makes you a better human being because uh, you will be able to view different problems in the society. Not only with your perception, you will be able to understand the perception of the members of the society helps in cracking civil services and makes you as a best administrator for problem solving because you know the real cause of the problem and you when you know the real cause you will be able to tackle it very easily and you will become a best administrator uh, <clears throat> you will be able to look into a problem in multi-dimensional manner the main goal of anthropology is to give solutions to human problems both Social, cultural, and physical. For example, Citizenship Amendment Act. So, this created a lot of uh, havoc in the society. Why? It has got a cultural roots. It has got some links with the religion. So, as an anthropologist, you will be able to understand the region, the reason for the cultural conflict. When you know the reason, you will cut at the root of the problem. And you will be able to give a very easy solution. Sex ratio is a problem in our society. Why? It is linked to culture. A boy child is being preferred than a girl child. So how to eradicate this kind of stigma existing in the society as an anthropologist is your task. Health and nutrition problem. For example, when a doctor is suggesting a physically weak person who is a vegetarian to consume meat, without understanding the cultural perception, the problem cannot be solved. So in different ways, uh, anthropology is helpful to you and uh, <clears throat> and as far as uh, paper 2 is considered paper 2 is completely Indian anthropology <clears throat> of these areas which deals with Indian villages and uh, Indian rural uh, society and uh, a tribal society <clears throat> the advantage with this is you will be able to tackle certain uh, uh, general studies areas uh, because these the whole Indian society is dealt in this uh, paper too and uh, this is the same anthropology perception you need to deal with and this paper 2 is much more easier when you are relatively compared with uh, a paper 1 when if you are done with paper 1 uh, you need not bother about paper 2 that is one of the other advantage with uh, a paper 2 which is very easy and helpful to you in uh, general studies so, <clears throat> as far as strategy of this uh, uh, <clears throat> preparation is considered, uh, different steps in preparation 
you need to follow different steps so what are the different steps you need to follow step by step uh, in our program so here in this first you need to understand what the subject is through uh, attending the classroom sessions or through going through the material after understanding this we will be conducting certain test series the main problem with test series is people uh, pay some fee for the test series and many people do not attempt this the main reason behind it is uh, when a test series is conducted the whole syllabus as a complete paper when it is being given you will don't ha you don't have the capability to tackle or write this because you don't have experience so what i do personally is uh, i will not give you a complete set of question paper to you i will give a single question and i will give you the synopsis how to write an answer to the question being given in advance and you need to copy the answer and articulate according to the question based upon the source being given to you when you are copying it here the main sense is to make you learn how to write an answer to a particular structured question the structure of the answer must be according to the structure of the question so this will be made pra made practice to you so that first you will lose the stigma within you or the fear within you or the hesitation within you or to write you lose i will make you to lose this first next is what is asked that you need to write only regarding the civil services precision need to be maintained how to maintain precision is part of the working program here and the word limit and time limit and these are certain skill sets which is essential to you which cannot be acquired by you in a, uh, at a time each skill set need to be practiced at a different time durations and in the examination you need to fill up them then you will be able to do that in our practice session so uh, answer writing will be the part of the strategy how to make synopsis and notes which is unique to you will be part of the session in practice so the the synopsis synopsis making method uh, which will not uh, tax your memory a lot uh, in order to program which will give you an edge over your competitors and the different kinds of flow charts diagrams are essential and this is the main program for uh, anthropology and uh, <clears throat> people who like to join our uh, program uh, can contact us um, jagannath uh, uh, who dealing anthropology for you so jaganmanne at gmail.com is our uh, is our uh, mail id j a g a n m a n n e at gmail.com and uh, our whatsapp address our whatsapp number is 8883999893 is our uh, uh whatsapp number uh, you can whatsapp to us so that uh, we will be guiding you online uh, both in terms of uh, both in terms of uh, uh, classroom sessions and in terms of practice sessions for examinations thank you